streamers, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, creators. I obviously have some stuff going on here. A little bit of a creepiness with the shadows. <laughs> I'm in the middle of shooting some stuff. So you're just going to have to deal with all of the stuff behind me. Um, <laughs> it is TGIF. Why? Why are we messed up today? <laughs> let me, let me just fix this. There we go. Uh, that's looking a little better. There we go. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It is a TGIF for sure. Shoot. And some of my buttons aren't working. Um, I am in the middle of a bunch of stuff. Th things are in shambles. Things are in rambles. Rambling shambles. We're just gonna go with it. <laughs> it's good to see everybody. Um, something new, what do you mean something new? Well, this is just like, this is not exactly new, but uh, I am shooting a bunch of stuff. Um, we No worries, we can totally deal. Thank you, <laughs> I appreciate that because you're gonna have to. <laughs> Happy Friday. Um, welcome, welcome you guys. Um, we have some games to play today. Paul, the magical Mr. Paul Dixon, um, threw us together a game to play together, which is going to be fun. Um, so hopefully you're in the mood for a little game action. Uh, but it's it's kind of like a it's a it's a play off of the trivia, um, and so you guys are going to have some fun. No worries, we go with it. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, no, I wound up watering it. And um, just to see how long I could keep it going. We'll see if I can make it all the way to Christmas <laughs> this year. <laughs> if I can, how amazing would that be? Like, seriously. Um, all right. So if you have any questions about video tech, uh, I'm shooting stuff about video tech right now. Um, if you have questions about, oh, and I have like new gear um, which I meant to pull out to just like show off, but that's okay. We'll do that next time. Um, if you have questions about tech, if you have questions about live streaming, if you have questions about getting bigger audience members, like more viewers, if you have questions about YouTube, if you have questions about making more money with your videos, if you have questions about anything, today's an AMA. It's open you are in control, except for when I take control and play a little game with you, which is coming up soon. <laughs> Do you win anything? You get points, and those points are great for bragging rights. If you want to um, win, then um, you can get the most points today. How about that, Sammy? <laughs> How does that work for you? <laughs> so put a cue in front of the question, as Kathleen is saying. Um, put a question in the front, that way it makes its way into my queue. And I forgot an email again. Oh man, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Hey Callie, throw, throw an email out there. <laughs> I forgot to throw, uh, I forgot to send an email. Usually a lot of people kind of wait for my email, um, which is ne not necessarily the greatest training in the world um, to train people to wait for an email, especially when I screw up and don't send one because I was working on uh, shooting stuff and I was working on other stuff this morning. Uh, bragging rights for the win. <laughs> internet points. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you get internet points. Um, it has been that week. <laughs> okay. For all of us, huh? <laughs> um, how was everybody's week? What did you do? What are you planning to do this weekend? Uh, I'm going to spend a little time exploring, a little bit of time working this weekend. So um, I've got a good mix in the plans for my weekend. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, any questions you have, um, but I want to wait to do the thing. Um, I want to wait to do the game. But real quick, those of you who, so we got into some questions last week, we released a couple of graphics. We released um, the glass profile, the uh, gra the 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 glass uh, profile pack in for eCam, and we got some people being like, "Hey, y'all, I don't use eCam. 
I use OBS or I use vMix. And um, we did release an OBS and vMix version of that pack on the website. So you can access that now um, on our livestreamingpros.com slash store link as well. Oh, I get email duty. I remember, <laughs> remember what happened last time. Oh, <laughs> that's right, I forgot. All right, do you want me to take a moment out, Callie? Or you've got it handled? Or do you want me to take a moment out to uh, do it right now? You just tell me. <laughs> you just tell me. <laughs> oh, boy. I remember the feet fiasco. <laughs> No free feet. Flying out to Portland tonight, spending the next week. Fantastic. Well, I, I'm guessing it's for a marathon. I hope it goes spectacularly well for you. Bought a newer car since somebody decided, to, oh, ouch. Ooh, sorry that happened. Nice, Jason. Got some pictures on my Twitter. Nice. I'll have to go check those out. Um, Melanie in the house. I saw Melanie pop in. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Um, so we, we've we had a whole bunch of stuff going on um, this um, uh, this week, this month, this year. <laughs> Part of that is what you see back here. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm shooting and also, um, you know, Swiffers. Because um, <laughs> that's an important part of shooting. <laughs> dusters. You've got to have dusters on hand when you're shooting gear. Especially black gear. Like, oh my God, does it attract dust? <laughs> nanny for sure <laughs> oh it's not actually for a marathon nice <laughs> okay 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 god i have no idea what is about to come down the pipeline for emails if you are on our email list i just apologize in advance for whatever callie is about to send you because i just gave her email duty since i forgot to send an email out letting people know that we were going live even though you should know that we go live at 10 a.m every 10 a.m. Pacific every single Friday, unless I, you know, choose to screw up and not go live. But <laughs> keep it clean. It's handled. I don't know how well it's handled. Um, <laughs> no, we never have anything going on at all. So I do have, uh, if you have questions, put a queue in front of the question, get its way into my queue. Super chats do take priority. Um, you need a lens blower to dust off the gadgets. That's true. That is very, very, very true. Absolutely. Um, it's not every single Friday. I know I've missed a couple of streams. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sammy. Um, and I apologize to everybody for not. Um, so let's start. Is Kelly sending out feet pics? No, hopefully not. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm glad that you think so. I forgot to send an email out today, so Callie is now, who knows what's happening in the email at the moment, but if you are on our, our email list, you definitely wanna check your email here in the next few minutes because something's coming down the pipeline. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, you guys, um, we have a trivia question. <laughs> We have a trivia question. Are you ready? Um, we have a game outside of trivia that we're going to play here shortly. We're not there yet. But first and foremost, so that I can pull the device out and show you, um, <laughs> the first trivia question of the day is, what is Algato's latest webcam called? Facecam Pro, Facecam X, Facecam MK2, Facecam MK3. Um, what is it? You're getting points that are bragging rights so that you can say to the world, to this community, I won trivia today. Um, let me know. You've got just a few seconds left. A, C, B, or D. I did that out of order because that's the way I am. We've got Z in the house. We've got B, we've got A, we've got C. Oh, the guesses are all over the place. Um, <laughs> and, and, oh, MK2. Uh, oh, <laughs> um, if you got that right, congratulations. Sorry, members only for feet pics. You're absolutely right about that. Okay, we've got questions coming in. Face cam something. It was face cam something. <laughs> okay, we've got questions coming in. Um, you're just 
you're getting all the creepy vibes going on today because I've got lights everywhere and I've got all kinds of things going on. Um, this is the new Face Cam MK2. Um, it's supposed to be higher quality. Uh, I've got to still plug it in and do some videos about that as well. But as you can see, it's bigger. Um, and actually this, I freaking love, love, love what they did on this Boop, privacy shutter. So on the old one, it's here somewhere. The old one is here somewhere. Um, I'm not seeing it, so I have to dig it up. But on the old one, the privacy shutter was a um, lens cap that you literally had to pull off. Um, but now we've got lens cover. I'm doing this backwards. Um, so that's the privacy lens, which I really like. It is a solid uh, lens cap or privacy cover. It uh, works really well. And um, yeah, so I'll be playing with that. I know I'm late on it. Harris has a video on it if you want to just check that out. Um, but I will be getting... Um, I will be getting things out. Oh, Sammy would have won the prize if there was one. Congratulations, Sammy. Congratulations for winning the non-existing prize. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Email has been sent. So if you're on the email, just go see whatever happened. I'm not sure. I, 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 did, I did something and gave Callie control. <laughs> All right. Um, privacy cover. I just unplugged my webcam if I'm not using it. But then you have to plug it back in, Jason. Then you have to plug it back in. <laughs> when bragging rights, I was the first person watching the stream. There you go. <laughs> oh, let's see the power of email. All right, let's see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, usually I send it out. So here's a, here's a question I get all the time. Like how, when do you send emails out? So if you are not building an email list, you need to change your strategy right now. Um, but um, I do send out emails to my email list like, hey, like here's a new video or we're going live, join us. I usually send mine out to my list about 30 minutes in advance um, of the live stream. Now, different audiences work very differently. My uh, Mine, I've tested an hour before, 24 hours before, two hours before, 30 minutes of the moment. Um, and so, It'll be, <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> okay, I'm checking my email now. <laughs> OMG, Lori ever got the most important thing. <laughs> wait, wait, I don't see hairy feet. Are you trolling me? Paul Dixon, are you trolling me right now? <laughs> The prize winner has to send in feet pics to claim the prize. How did this turn into feet pics? Galore. Oh, I can always count on you guys for making me laugh, even if I'm having a bad day, which I'm not. But technically, no, you're not trolling me, technically speaking. Okay. Oh, that's very, very kind of you. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, I just speak from the heart. When I send my emails, a lot of people respond about this, like they love my emails, which is awesome and nice. And I just am so grateful that that's the case because how many times do you see, are you subscribed to email lists and you're like, Ugh, like I just want to unsubscribe as quickly as possible. So I really do appreciate that. I just try and speak in the emails like I talk and just from the heart as much as possible. So <laughs> we are now now a feet stream. So welcome to the foot stream, feet stream, the I don't know what streams. Now I'm getting 20 emails from LSP. What did she do? I saw that. There's like, but I'm subscribed to my list, like a bazillion different email addresses. So they all come. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> YouTube is going to start suggesting the stream to an interesting audience with all the feed. Yeah, please don't. Um, algorithm, please do not <laughs> um, send us out to the wrong audience. Okay. I see questions coming through. Let me get to questions. Um <laughs> Okay, so uh, questions. If you have a question about anything, not feats, because that's the plural of feats. 
<laughs> if you have questions about technical stuff, about gear, about video, live streaming, about audience growth, about YouTube strategy, about anything, um, then now is the time to ask them. Put a cue in front of your question. If you just joined us, oh man, you walked into a stream. That's, yes, don't walk away. Don't walk away from your streams because you don't know what's coming down. Um, all right, the question. Um, Kathleen, I don't remember what call, what question that was. If you want to post that in here, I will answer that. Um, Mega said, Mega Marino said, does anyone know if, oh, that's the question. You, sorry. There. Um, Mega Marino asked, does anyone know if I promote a video, when or how they charge me? Does it come out automatically before you get a payment? Or do I use a credit card or what? So this is in reference to the promotions tab, AKA the ability to run ads um, on YouTube. And so um, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I ran ads on YouTube, but if I remember correctly, you set up an account, they have your credit card and they charge once a month. I don't believe they charge like when a pay, when a play happens, like that would be ridiculous. Um, but I believe it works very similarly to Facebook where at the end of the month you get a charge billed for everything that you ran promotions for. Um, so that would be, unless somebody wants to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, the Google ads account is what it's using. Thank you, liaison. Um, and then they just charge you like you run all the promotions you want throughout the month and then they'll charge you. You can see the collection of, of expenses. So it's not like it's a blind spend. Um, so you're not going to be hit with charges that you don't expect. Um, and you should be able to, if again, I remember correctly, you should be able to set spending limits, um, on the, you know, what you're putting out there. So if you do go into the promotions tab, you want to explore, um, doing ads to garner a bigger audience, to send traffic on other channels to, you know, something of yours, your own, your product, whatever, then you can absolutely do that. Great, googly moogly. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly's gone crazy today. She, she's got, she's got sick brain today. So everybody send her good vibes. Um, she is not feeling well this week. Um, okay, next question. <laughs> Victor, um, thoughts on the two new cameras coming out, the Mevo Core, Mevo Core and Insta 8K camera. I have a call scheduled with Mevo, um, with the Mevo team. Um, those of you who have not been around me for a long time, I've been very involved in the live stream Mevo teams in the past. Um, and I kind of stepped away from talking about them just because there were some, there were some bugs that I didn't quite think that that was really the, um, the way to go in terms of most recommendations. Um, but they are doing some interesting things with the Mevo Core coming up. Um, they're going to be showing that off uh, at NAB. And I'm kind of bummed I'm not going to NAB this year. I, I'm thinking about going to NAB next year. We'll see. Um, but uh, the Mevo Core has interchangeable lenses, which is interesting. Um, micro four thirds lenses um, can work on that. So it that that's gonna be an interesting one. Um, I have a call scheduled with Mevo to get the breakdown of those. I should be getting those in my hands to test and review. So if you guys have questions, if you're interested in that product, um, then stick around. I will definitely, um, you know, see what I can do in terms of coverage of that. Um, but but yeah, it's, I think that they're stepping up their game or stepping out their game, I should really say, uh, with the Mevo line to really make that a little bit more mm, flexible in terms of what you can do with their gear. 
Um, yeah, Armando um, is at uh, NAB. So Armando, definitely check that out. Report back. Let us know um, if you get your hands on that or anything else. I'll be keeping an eye on the NAB news. That is, is that happening right now? Is that happening next week? Is that now? I think it's now, um, or it's like in the next few days. So uh, NAB, if you're not familiar with NAB, it is the place to get all of the new gear um, from manufacturers. So when it comes to cameras and lights and all of that. So it's been pre-COVID since I went to, pre-pandemic, since I've been to NAB. Um, and I was kind of like letting it run its course, letting all of the like big events kind of happen for a couple of years before I go back to them because there's still all of these, you know, stories of, but, but it was always the case. Like you go to these big conferences, CES, NAB, you get sick, you're just going to. Um, and so I was just kind of like, waiting to see how that all pans out a little bit. Um, and maybe next year I'll, I'll be going back, but we'll see. That's kind of been like in my, in my brain as everybody's heading to NAB and I'm not, I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting a little jealous again. Long days, a very, very long days. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, setting up your booth. Nice. Um, what's your booth? What, uh, what's your, uh, company? Okay. Uh, I already had my hands on the Mevo core, took it to Ecamm camp. Oh, you did. Oh, <laughs> oh, a Saturday uh, through Wednesday. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. All right, so those are those are some of my thoughts. Um, I'd be interested to you know see that line progress and get really interesting. Congratulations, Simon! Launched first podcast. Uh, big learning curve. Yes. Here's a question. I had a question for y'all. Um, do y'all want more podcasting content? You know, it's it's interesting because I'm in the podcast hall of fame, as most of you know, and people keep asking me questions about podcasting, and it's just not something that I've covered lately, uh, or in several years, really. Um, but as podcasting is now, I think I've asked this, this of you before, but like as podcasting is now becoming more of blurred lines between video and audio, um, then I uh, then I don't know. I, I, I feel like I should be adding uh, a lot more podcasting content to the mix. So let me know if that's something that you want. Um, and I would, uh, I will see what I can do. Um, because I don't know how many of you guys are podcasting and do you consider like how, what is the definite? Let me just ask you this, type it in the comments. What is the def definition of podcasting to you today? Not what it was a year ago, not what it was even six months ago. What is the definition of a podcast to you as of today? Tell me in the comments. Let me know. <gasps> Mel, are you going to NAB? What? <laughs> Bloody stumps. That's about right, too. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> uh, I'm actually live streaming and repurposing the video as a podcast. Fantastic. Um, podcast streaming pros. There you go. <laughs> All right. Next question. Melanie, speaking of, um, what are your thoughts on vertical live streams? Uh, I actually love vertical live streams for specific purposes. Uh, I think it's a, gr so, you know, we've done a lot of tests here on this channel and we've done, I need to be doing more, uh, content rather than tests, but, um, I definitely have, um, an affinity for them in particular ways. Uh, they also open you up to a broader audience because if you're doing vertical live streams on YouTube, you get shown in the shorts feed uh, and then there's the live feed as well, the vertical live feed as well. So you could show up in the shorts feed and I have videos all on that. It's interesting because it does open you up to a new audience. That's a pro and a con at the same time, let's just call it what it is, um, because the quality of the viewers at this stage in the game is not necessarily the targeted audience that you're looking for. And so you do get a whole lot of spam, you get a lot of trolls, you get a lot of people who are not the right audience for you. However, 
if you are doing it well, you can actually capture some of the right audience in that process. You are gonna have to have moderators going, you are going to be ready for trolls, um, and as time goes on, um, more and more people will be, right now they're dealing with a lack of live streams to push. Um, and so, you know, as if you think about the number of creators on YouTube, what is it in you know, the billions or millions or whatever? I don't know. I don't know how many people are creating on YouTube at the moment. Um, but, um, you know, probably over a billion, right? Maybe viewers, creators, I don't know what that is. Maybe the liaison is still here and can answer that. But that's not the point. The point is, if you take a look at, um, you know, the number of creators and the number of creators actually doing vertical lives, it's a tiny, tiny little ratio of fraction. So the, like, they're dealing until more people are doing it the algorithm isn't going to properly be able to distribute and find the right audiences um and so it's a it's a bit of a waiting game if you're going to use them um but i say be early and take advantage of the early stages um for that process oh um how many sorry how many creators how many people are creating content on youtube like what's the creator count at this point um there are a lot of vertical streamers on tiktok yeah for sure because that's been around longer on tiktok as well for sure okay i'm just looking at your i asked you what your definition of a podcast is currently in this as of today um paul says for me, podcasts are audio only, but that's more personal preference. Podcast equals audio, visual transmission of information. What do you mean by visual transmission of information? Um, oh, wow. 12th NAB, that's amazing. Well, I am so, so happy to hear that. Thank you so much. Um, not a fan, I like more visual information, but I get it and I do it as a podcast. Mine is on a totally different topic. It's for my work, high performance building, um, audio engineer, nice. To me, podcasts are long form content with two to four people discussing a topic. Okay, why not a single person, just out of curiosity? Um, so vertical live videos for top of funnel content or behind the scenes, yes, it, um, because shorts are top of the funnel, right? And so if you're, if, you're discovery, if you're getting discovery in that format, then yes, your shorts, your vertical lives, top of the funnel discovery content behind the scenes kind of content for vertical lives can work really, really well to help you hone in on the right audience. Um, if you're just doing Q and A's like this, I find it's not as easy to capture the right audience, but let's say, you know, I'm going live and doing behind the scenes of video gear. That's definitely going to attract an audience because of the visualization feature factor um, it's going to attract an audience that's going to be more likely to want to subscribe to my channel or come over to other content, um, you know, that kind of thing. So more casual, uh, raw vertical live streams, as well as the produced stuff, but you just got to be strategic about it. And by the way, we do have on our store vertical live graphics. If you're wanting to play with that, that has been a big popular uh, graphics release on our store of pre ready to go graphics for you. Uh, Mike says many podcast uh, listeners, viewers now podcast is videos on YouTube where a host. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or interviewing people in a studio. Historically, yeah, well, not, not historically. Um, so here's like when I first started, because the reason that I'm in the podcast hall of fame is because when I first started in 2005, podcasts were both video and audio. They started out that way and then they went to audio only. Now they're coming back to video and audio, which is just fascinating to me. Um, and so, you know, his like, when you say historically, most people think of podcasts as audio, yes, because that's where the masses became aware of podcasting in the timeline of things. Um, but 
it definitely um, has done a pendulum swing, which is super fascinating to me. All right. Oh, oh, we have a game to play. Who wants to play a game? Type game in the comments if you want to. Oh, 2 million creators in the YPP. Okay, cool. Thank you. Though traditionally I was known as video as well as audio. Uh, Similarly related, since I stopped communing, I've fallen out of the podcast habit. abso freaking lutely I also think of podcasts as audio first. Um, the ones in my rotation have a mix of video and no audio, but I'm old school. And if I listen via Apple Podcasts, it's a podcast. Um, Yes, you do expect long form content for sure, right? Okay, um, video and audio, audio visual, cool. Uh, qual, qual comedy, thank you so much for that clarification. Um, live streams, exactly, that's exactly what they are. <laughs> Okay, keep those, oh, sorry, 3 million now in YPP, um, a YouTube partner program, if you're not familiar with that term. Uh, okay, vertical wear, wait, vertical wear, everywhere, all of, all of the places, <laughs> all of the places. Game, 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 you guys want to play a game, all right. Okay, Paul Dixon has put together a fun little game for us, um, and... Are you ready? All right, this is called Guess the Gear. <laughs> As you know, I get a bunch of gear um, here in my studio. I get a ton of gear to review. Manufacturers send me all kinds of gear. Now is your opportunity to guess the gear. You get 500 points if you get it. You get 1,000 points if you get the exact name. Um, it's like a who's that Pokemon? <laughs> sure. I've never played that game, but okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> Guess the gear. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit to answer um, and <laughs> tuned in just to see the pixelated game. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, Sammy is guessing Roadcaster Pro 2. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, Steven Peters is guessing Roadcaster Pro 2. Uh, what do you win? You win points! I told you! <laughs> uh, hint, please. I can't give you a hint. Uh, gr uh, so, um, Elgato Stream Deck, not something for Mackie. Stream Deck XL, Timothy says. All right, so far... No one has gotten it. All right. Keep those guesses coming. This is the... Oh, 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 oh. And we have a winner. Ding, 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 ding. Streamer eggs. <laughs> Quote comedy. comedy. Um, congratulations. You win that. Um, this part of the game, at least. I know that comment didn't look good. <laughs> cappuccino machine. <laughs> All right. So congratulations. Uh, it is guess the gear. So that was a hard one. That was a bit of a hard one, to be honest. So um, what did you think? Did you like that game? We have another one that we can play later. Uh, but for now, we'll uh, just go back to answering questions. K-Walk Comedy. So sorry. Thank you for correcting me. K-Walk Comedy comedy. Okay, now I got it. I got it. <laughs> Congrats. Oops, that is not correct. My apologies. Um, <laughs> hitting the wrong buttons on my stream deck. You win nothing. <laughs> you win. They won a thousand points. A thousand points. Or just Kathy. Okay, cool. <laughs> Kathy, thank you. <laughs> you get points as Eden is pointing out. All right. Um, okay, next question. If you have questions come about video, about live streaming, about YouTube, about audience growth, about anything, let me know. Um, and Kathy, I will try and remember. I totally get it. People have butchered my name my entire life as well. So you are not alone. Aw, super chat from Marco. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Uh, where? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Super chat may not be on this profile. Hold, please. 
So this is what I get for constantly changing profiles on Ecamm and adding new things into it. Hold on. I'm getting my super chats <laughs> done. <laughs> okay, we have super chats now. All right, you guys, now you can super chat. And I apologize, Marco, for not having that open and on previously. Okay, we are all good now. All good. How could you forget Pocket Kelly? I'm sorry. I, I've been doing a lot of private trainings and so I use... <laughs> I use um, different profiles and I don't always remember to get that uh, stream, <laughs> that uh, stream super chat uh, alert on. I do need hold music. You're absolutely right about that. I will get right on that, Andre. <laughs> that is a great great idea okay um next question is uh let's see mark if you have monetization turned off while going live on youtube can you still get super chat no um if you are not active well that okay i'm gonna clarify if you have if you have not enabled monetization as in accepting your way into the YouTube partner program, you cannot get your super chats. If you have enabled the YouTube partner program and you have turned off ads monetization on your stream, super chats will still work. Ads and super chats work differently. So you have the ability to turn ads off to turn it, but it does use the word monetization. So it's a great question. Um, but turning ads off of your stream does not turn super chats. Those are two separate, uh, things. So yeah. Hello, Hank. Good to see you in the house. How are you? Um, I know, I know French press. I know. <laughs> All right. Next question. Creative amplifiers. Do you think a podcast audience is different? audio only versus video great question a hold please um uh sorry i just had to send a, a quick message to my team okay so um question was do you think the audience the podcast audience um, is different audio versus video. I do think there's quite a bit of difference in terms of listening habits. Um, and that is that, you know, audio um, is a, a passive environment, right? So if you're audio, like Kathleen, your tech coach was saying earlier in chat um, that it was that that as soon as she started stopped commuting to work podcasts went out the door which is the case for a lot of people um and so if you are doing passive uh listening for audio that's definitely going to be a less engaged audience member now what i like about the video aspect of it is it could be passive for you you could listen to it in a passive way um, but you also have the ability to then engage so the problem with podcasts in its general current form out there which is if you're listening through apple podcasts or through spotify or any of these others you don't have a community aspect to that um you don't have a place to go leave comments on that podcast episode um and that's the thing that's always been missing for me in the podcast realm when it stopped being video and audio and a more generic form of a definition and it became audio only on these pod catcher apps, um, you lost all community, you lost all sense of connection with the audience. Now that it's opening up to video, you have much more capability to then reintroduce the community aspect and the connection between host and listener or viewer. So I think that that's a really um, important difference is uh, you know how are we 
engaging with that content, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, all right. Lurga is messing. Wait, what? I'm not messing with people. What are you talking about? What, what, what? <laughs> I think if you are a video and audio podcast, that a lot of video first ones overlook the audio experience. Yeah, I think people have, you know, they have their preferences in terms of consumption. Um, and so some people like to, that passive. I am not a go to the gym and listen to a podcast kind of person. I need to be pumped up with music. Like, you're not going to get me involved at the gym if I'm having to listen to like a talking interview. Like, that's just not going to happen for me. That's just me. But tons of people do that at the gym, right? And so that's some, it's just, it's a very different mentality, I think. Okay. So uh, next question comes from Grim up north. Do you rate newer gear at all? I remember the days it used to be cheap, um, but there seems to be a lot of decent stuff from them nowadays. Yeah, so newer, newer, nobody knows how to say it, um, <laughs> is, um, is a great brand for sure. Um, and so, you know, depending on what you're buying, um, they do have some great options out there. And in fact, I actually, um, I have a bunch of newer, newer gear in my studio. Um, I'm actually planning on ordering some more just to do some additional tests. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, Grim Up North, uh, definitely go, uh, go subscribe to that. Um, I am thinking about some specific gear that I wanted to kind of test out and play with. Um, and so I, I would just encourage you to stick around. But if there's something specific that you're asking about in terms of their gear, um, then definitely let us know. I've played with a lot of their gear in the, the first place. Don't believe me, I'm subscribed. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. I can listen to a podcast on the treadmill, no problem. Weights, no way. I need pump up music for sure. <laughs> See, I don't do, I'm not a good treadmill person. Like every once in a while I'll do the treadmill, but um, I need, if I'm going to walk, I'm going to be outdoors. <laughs> We all we all have the we all have very different um, ways of getting the job done, don't we? <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I'm scrolling back up. Why? Thank you. On the next podcast, uh, obviously you're doing a podcast, so I, I'm sure you have some thoughts on the matter. Um, what I like about video, about YouTube video slash algorithm, means every episode, even back catalog, has massive discovery and growth potential for sure. Um, and and that's I, that's one of the things that I love about like I, I think that YouTube podcasts is very early stage. It's definitely like not there in the format that I would love to see it, but it's it's early and we're in the process, in my opinion, looking back at the last 18 years of this process of podcasts, um, you know, we're definitely in the early stages of its shifting definition. As we've seen here from the comments, most people still think of podcasts as audio only. Um, and it is really challenging to get perfect. Um, and y'all will notice that my audio has been off for sure, like lately, just because I've been like, I've, everything is off right now for me. Everything is in shambles. Um, it's been that way for the ma majority of this year because I'm in the middle of some massive video projects that require a whole lot of moving around, a whole lot of testing, a whole lot of um, shooting multiple camera angles. So it's just been a beast of a project that I've been involved in this year. And I hope that that will come to a wrap fairly soon, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, that was a whole side note. <laughs> Podcasts uh, like audio is, um, you know, if you're wanting to focus only on that audio experience, then that matters for sure. Um, okay. Let's see. What other questions do you guys have? Oh, do you want to see? Um, 
Hold on. Amaze May has a large number of successful podcasting show audios. Is uh, I wonder whether them trying to do a video may help that or not. Maybe it will um, make them think about tech more, though. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely um, like. I think that it opens up, like, the way I, now I'm in this space, of course, right, where people who are thinking about the tech of video um, are coming to me. I, I deal with a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients whose primary thing coming to me is saying, hey, uh, I've got this audio podcast, I need it to be video because video is the way these days, and what do I do? And so we're dealing with an influx of one-on-one -on -one clients who pay us to do the work for them um, and consult with them uh, of this audio podcast, like people at the top of the charts, podcasts, technic like regular podcasts, audio, um, and they're seeing the need to turn it into video. So YouTube has been a big part of that uh, process and also just the fact that you can repurpose. If you do your audio podcast video form, you can then have the ability to do a lot more repurposing on the social aspect as well. Um, not currently. <laughs> so I will, again, I do not currently have an Abby cam set up, um, but I will get back to that. I've had to steal, um, and, I've had to steal and repurpose all of my cameras over the last few months. So that a lot of, a lot of craziness going on. And I, I have done a terrible job at sharing behind the scenes of that, but we'll get back there. Okay. Real quick, before we go on to more questions, I see more questions popping up. Uh, how about a little guessing game again? This one might be a little easier for you. Um, but borrow. Yes, I'm borrowing. <laughs> um, all right. You guys, guess the gear game now. Go. Guess the gear. This is a new game that we're playing as of this week. Um, and if you like it, we can do a whole lot more with it as well. So guess the gear. Uh, I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you a, just a little bit more time to put your guesses in. E.T. Callie got it right. It's E.T. <laughs> No, it's not ET. Um, let's see. Katie says the Elgato teleprompter. Victor says prompter. Uh, Marco's bringing Callie some chicken noodle soup. Fantastic. A funnel. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have funnels in, in video gear? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, a camera. I can't unsee ET, Eden says. <laughs> Um, oh, JFK says Elgato face cam for the win. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Congratulations, JFK. Uh, you now win the thousand. No, you didn't get the exact model. So you get 500 points for that one. Just for what it's worth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Johnny Five. <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? Sorry. I apologize. I keep hitting. So I have a different profile on. I apologize. Ah, bah. <laughs> I need to move that button off of that space <laughs> on my stream deck. Here, hold on. I know we only have a few more minutes, but I'm doing something live. Hold music now. Entering hold music so I can hide my last comment in the spot on my stream deck that I am always used to putting it there. Now we are good to go. See, now I'm hitting the right button. Whee! <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let's see. Next question is um, from Grim Up North. How do you balance staying true to your unique style and content while also adapting to trends and audience feedback to foster growth on your streaming platform? That's a great question. Um, so, you know, I think you have to, one, identify. You have to be really aware of what that unique style is for you. Um, so for me, a couple of the things that I um, hold true to is um, my core value is fun. Like if you're in on this channel, if you're watching me on this, co my content on this channel, 
you appreciate the fact that I bring a fun, lighthearted element to the learning process and that I break down information very easy to understand. That's been one of my strengths for 18 years as I've been doing content. And, um, you know, that's something that I hold true to no matter what I'm doing. And it's, it's something that people say constantly that they appreciate about me. So the word fun, um, I laugh, I giggle, I have, we, we have a lot of fun around here. We're talking about feet. We're talking about eggs. We're talking about whatever, right? Comes up in the conversations. So we like to have fun while learning and also help you understand concepts without overcomplicating it, without you know getting uber geeky, even though I can, I have that technical knowledge. I don't like to approach things that way. Um, I like to make it more approachable as content and information, right? So um, that is like, when you ask about your unique style, like those are a couple of my things that are really core to how I present and what um, I do on my on my content. And so if you are not aware of those things, then you are going to lose your unique style just by being open to all of the trends and all of the things that are happening out there. That being said, once you know and can identify that with clarity, um, and sometimes that takes time to develop and that takes time to understand and it's okay in the beginning stages to experiment and to play um, because things will feel off or things will feel right and then you drop the things that feel off and you focus in on the things that feel good to you and your personality. Um, but as you you know are aware of a trend and you want to take advantage of that to try and grow your audience and get more visibility, then look for what that trend is and one like for me again going back to because I don't know you uh, and your personality exactly but going back to to my story if there's a trend that is mean-spirited guess what I'm leaving that behind like I don't care how many viewers it would get me it would get me the wrong viewers right so that's number one when thinking about trends and different things to increase your audience I don't want people who like and appreciate mean spiritedness in my channel. Like I won't, I don't want you to subscribe if that's you. So um, that's number one is identifying which trends and which things you want to even play around with. Um, and then once you do find something that is on par with your value system, with your unique presentation and style, then adapting it, using it, and saying like, what can I add to this that is, it, that would be in that unique style? So like just taking advantage of those trends, adding your own little perk to it uh, can be super, super beneficial. <laughs> and yes, you should unsubscribe now if you hate cookies or eggs. Um, <laughs> and we're, we're actually gonna try something here in just a second. If you don't know what we're talking about, then okay. <laughs> All right, Aynar. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that I hope that that you know answers your question. Um, but that's how I would approach it: is first get real clear and have clarity around what your unique style is and is not, and then approach the right trends, approach the right things to grow your audience um, because those are super valuable and then add your flair to it. Uh, if my college teachers were as fun and relatable as y'all, I wouldn't have, I would have had a much better experience. Good to know. I'm sorry that, uh, that I couldn't do that for you. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, great answer. Fantastic. Glad that was helpful. Speaking of eggs and cookies and all things sweet and nice, are eggs sweet and nice? They're nice. They can be sweet. But that's not my point. My point is, I don't know which one. Hold on. Yes, it does take time. It can take time. It can take experiments. Most people think they have to have it right from the very beginning. It's just not going to happen that way. It's just not. You're going to experiment. You're going to be like, what the heck was that? Like, I don't like that person that just showed up on camera getting rid of that, right? Like, that's part of the process of discovering who you are on camera. All right. 
This is not the right one, but we'll do it anyway. And then we'll go, Easter eggs are sweet. You're right. Uh, what is Callie's favorite chocolate bar? Uh, chocolate eggs are sweet. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, oh, I don't know. I did not see that. I'm coming to you, JFK. Um, I see your question now. Um, what is Callie's favorite chocolate bar? Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Is it D? Is it plop? Is it Coffee Crisp? Is it Kit Kat Caramel? Is it Toffee Crisp? What is it? We've got, <laughs> Callie better know this one. Toffee Crisp, oh lovely. <laughs> this one is easy. <laughs> the next one is not so easy. Coffee Crisp. If you guessed B, then you win. Paul, you know it's not plop. Is plop like a UK, is that a UK, like is that completely made up or is that like a UK? chocolate bar. I, I, I need to know this because, all right, we've got B, B, B. Has she tried plop? Okay. Is it really a thing? Is that really a thing? And now I have to look up plop. Um, it's Cali crisps. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, please answer me. Plop. I'm you. Okay. Hold on. UK here. Never heard of plop or coffee crisp. Well, so coffee crisps, um, are so coffee crisp are uh, a Canadian thing. Callie spent a lot of time in Canada when um, she was younger. Plop is Swedish. Uh, I've never heard of plop. I'm looking plop up right now though. Plop. Oh, I spelled something um, much not that. <laughs> And you don't want to know what's coming up on search results as I type plop. <laughs> I'm going to ignore. I'm doing this with my eyes closed because I can't, I can't unsee what I just saw. Um, okay, candy bar. <laughs> plop is a chocolate bar manufactured. Duh. What? Okay, I'm going to... Wikipedia just failed me miserably. Oh. Plop. It looks good. I, I still don't understand what it is. It's just a chocolate bar. It's the, what is up with this marketing of plop? Y'all, pl this is, <laughs> pl with, oh, okay. Col so it says Coletta plop is the perfect chocolate bar for anyone who loves a sweet treat. What kind of marketing is that? What? <laughs> disappointed right now. Okay. I'm coming back to, okay, hold on. We had one more trivia question, then I'm answering all of the other questions and I'll, we'll go a little late, but y'all aren't going to leave anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to be just a few minutes late. Okay. Well, no plop Sherlock. <laughs> that cracked me up. All right. You guys, we talked about this last time. If you were not paying attention, now is the time to get it right. You guys got it wrong last time. What is Callie expecting you to bring when you're late to this stream? I just rhyme. <laughs> okay, is it cookies? Is it coffee crisps? Is it eggs? Or is it unicorn poop? <laughs> yes, I just said poop on stream. <laughs> okay. Oh, I only added it because the name was funny. It is a funny name and it's terrible marketing. Um, all right, we've got A, we've got C, C, A, B, C. Still, some of you, okay, more of you are getting it right now because we've had this question like three different times and <laughs> you guys. So if I turned up with an egg and a coffee crisp, we would take the egg? Oh, that's a good question, Paul. That is a very good question. It is eggs, as you can see, because it is uh, trivia time is over. But um, most of the time you guys guess A, cookies. And I just, I, I've been I've been sorely disappointed. Callie has been sorely disappointed in you. Um, but <laughs> I'm the one who asks for cookies. It's a trick question. I ask for cookies, Callie asks for eggs, and since she's the one in the chat room with the ban hammer and the moderation tools, I would highly, highly suggest 
that you get it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love you all. Okay, questions, real questions now. Um, we had JFK. Um, <laughs> Kathleen's with me, Team Cookies, right there. Heard Sony's releasing new firmware updates for some cameras. Any chance or hint at a new ZVE 10 firmware updates? Any birdies saying anything? I have not heard anything on that. Um, uh, I don't know if there's, um, yeah, I haven't heard anything about a ZVE 10 firmware update. If I do, I will absolutely let you know. And then Hank, any suggestions on how to find guests in a certain niche or format to interview remotely? Um, so here's what I would do is, um, definitely, um, there are two things. One, get involved in communities of that niche. If there's a particular thing that you're looking for, you know, to like find people to rem to remote interview, then get involved in groups, whether that's Facebook groups or communities on Circle or Discord of people in that niche who have audiences, who have shows, who are putting themselves out there. Um, that's the easiest way is to just like, you know, kind of get involved in there and then learn who they are, uh, learn a little bit about them and then approach them. The other thing you can do is look through the charts um, on your favorite podcasts or, you know, YouTube, you know, try and search through some categories there, um, t you know, do some searches of that niche and see who's coming up in the video search results. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of different ways. It just requires a little bit of research um, for you to be able to find those right people, but it's not hard. You know, anybody who is putting themselves out there. It's not that hard to find people. You just need to find the right communities or the right, um, uh, yeah, the right communities or right channels um, and, and approach them strategically. Um, all right, been making for videos for about a year or two. Haven't cared about thumbnails. Just crossed 500 subs. Should I really care about thumbnails? Oh, what a, what a question to end this stream with. We're not ending yet. Stick around for the question. Um, okay, congratulations on 500 subs, by the way. Big congratulations. Yes, you should absolutely be caring about thumbnails on YouTube. Um, YouTube, the two biggest things that you want to care about when you're creating content on YouTube is thumbnails and titles. Thumbnails and titles, thumbnails and titles. These are your billboards. So if you're driving down the highway and you see those billboards, uh, you know, on the side of the road, um, that is what your title and your thumbnails are. And so that's how you're going to attract the audience for your videos. So you can come up on the search results um, and if your thumbnail isn't attractive to people, they're gonna click on somebody else's video. And so one of the things, um, and uh, the um, YouTube Creators channel has a lot of stuff on this. Uh, the YouTube Liaison uh, channel has a lot of stuff on this as well. You might wanna just explore those two channels um, to kind of start digging into that process. But if you are not attracting the right audience um, for that content, or if you're not putting out the thumbnail that's going to attract that audience, they're never gonna click on it. And so, you know, a lot of people waste a lot of time at the beginning stages with things like tags and YouTube SEO, um, and it's not doing you any good really at the end of the day. Um, and, but what will do you good is titles and thumbnails, getting really strong at those. Um, and so, you know, there's lots of, lots of videos about the, you know, how to go about that, but you really want your thumbnails to be, um, to catch attention, to stop people from the scroll of other videos. And you need to think about what is what other videos are like beside yours, right? And what other videos are attracting the right attention. So do searches for your content. See what catches your eye. Um, but a couple of real quick uh, things in terms of thumbnails. Just 
you know, one to three words max on that thumbnail. So many people try and put the whole story on the thumbnail. That's not the purpose of a thumbnail. The story is your video. The, um, the headline is your thumbnail and title. And your th title and your thumbnail should not match. Um, they should kind of support each other in creating intrigue and creating curiosity. Um, and so if you're gonna put your face on there, um, you know, make it big, not a tiny little thumbnail, like not a lot of tiny little face hidden in the thumbnail, but you want your face to be kind of big and uh, up close so that people can really connect with your eyes as well. Uh, if you put the same thing in the title and thumbnail, that's one less way to get somebody to click. That's a great way to say it and to think about it. Um, <laughs> I think it's titles that have been working for me, especially since I'm probably the only Jamaican making content around something called, I don't even know how to say that. Is that like, um, MK3? Like, is that like Callie and, is that like the Callie and Kathleen craze? <laughs> what did I say? Did I say it wrong again? I... I'm just never going to get it. I'm never going to get it, Renee. <laughs> Creator insider. I don't know what I said. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, so titles. If your titles are working for you, great. Fantastic. Also, make sure your thumbnails are working for you. Uh, okay. You guys. I uh, hope that that is a helpful way um, to wrap up the stream. Put your dancing shoes on machine. Oh, it's a German music instrument. Fantastic. Interesting. That is fascinating. Um, okay. So yeah. So also look for, put your dancing shoes on. We're going to dance this baby out here in just a second, but um, also make sure that you're looking at ways to, that's so specific. Like we want to be niche, but that may be uber specific so you might want to take it out a level right if you picture like your niche here you might want to take it out a level in terms of awareness and content that people you know maybe there's another instrument that people are playing that is a little bit more popular that if they were to discover this instrument they might be even more intrigued. And so you can kind of like layer out a little bit in terms of the niche if you're finding a that niche is too specific that people aren't searching for it and discovery is a little hard, uh, just as a quick tip there. All right, you guys, we've got our YouTube members to thank. Um, we are gonna dance this baby out. I uh, super appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, for showing up today, asking fantastic questions, and uh, show up next. Uh, oh, it's pretty popular. Fantastic. There you go. I don't know a thing about music, as you can tell. Have a wonderful weekend. Make sure you take care of yourself this weekend. Do something fun, and um, I'll see you next week, yeah? All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Turn it up.